Hi, this is Rick Roller, and also with me is Mr. Dan Naylor, who's our executive producer, owner of the school, and my boss, <laughs> who's going to be here with us tonight, doing the technical part of all this. Um, I'm a longtime real estate agent, about 45 years in the business, and I've been teaching these real estate classes since 1980, so do the math on that. <laughs> it's a long time. Uh, I've written part of the exam. Uh, many for, for many years, I was Mr. Exam. I mean, they would call me when too many people started to pass, and I'd come up and make it harder. And then one day I woke up and said, what the heck am I doing? You know, I'm, I'm just trying to make the exam a little harder so people can waste another 60 or 80 bucks taking the test. And, you know, so I quit doing it. <laughs> so I turned into the guy that just gives you all the answers now. So I don't write the test anymore. I told him I wouldn't do it. And I also, but I do take the test a lot. You know, I mean, uh, Utah allows us to take it every once in a while, actually as many times as we want. And, uh, you know, some of the other states will let you go take their exam as well. So I used to travel around taking the test. I, you know, I know it was kind of a weird thing, but it is something that I really got into. I wrote the whole test for Texas uh, a few years back. I wrote the Texas for North and South Carolina. I wrote the Texas, you know, I mean, all over, okay. But uh, but right now, we're going to go through some Utah law. And these things on Utah, but please understand that when you pass this real estate exam, you've passed really two tests. You've passed a national test that is pretty much the same in all states, or at least it comes out of the same 3,000 question database. And you've passed a state test as well. You must pass each one of these two tests uh, individually. Uh, you can't like ace one and get a bad score on the other and average them together. They both must, they most, <laughs> they both must be passed with the passing passing score in either one of them. And um, it's a multiple choice test. Every question's multiple choice. And really, what you need to realize is that this is a recognition exam. Okay, you don't have to know the right answer. You only have to be able to pick it out of a lineup of four. <laughs> okay. So here's the question. Read it twice. Read the stem of the question twice before glancing down at the answers. So you get a real clear indication of what they're asking you to do. Because a lot of these questions, you know, they, they go this way, and then they, woo, they take a turn that way, or woo, they take a turn that way, you know, by saying, except, or include it, or not include it, or, you know, uh, which is wrong, you know. And so make sure you understand um, the nature of the question and then look at the answers. And then from that, you should be able to eliminate one or two of those answers. And that gives you a 50-50 chance of getting it right. You need a C minus to pass anyone. Uh, but for you super, unfortunately, they don't tell you, they just tell you you pass. They don't tell you you got 100%. I know it's really gonna bother some of you. You walk out, well, what was my score? I wanna know my score, you know, and they don't, they're not gonna tell you. Okay, so anyway, that's kind of how it goes. Okay, we have a few people that are joining us tonight. Uh, well, hey, there's Steve Matthews on. Steve is uh, calling in from uh, Nevada. Uh, great, great friend of mine, but a friend of mine for many, many years. Steve Matthews was the first person I ever sold a house to. You know, bless his heart. He waited till I got a license, and then, uh, then when I got a license, we we hopped in the car. First day I was licensed. Went out, found the house, wrote it up, took it to my sales manager. He rewrote it. <laughs> well, that's my first deal. It was pretty. How could that happen, Rick? I mean, it was yeah. only a two-page contract, or was it one page at the time? Well, there were several <laughs> blanks you had to fill in. I mean, come on, okay. Anyway, Listen, so the, my the, sales manager rewrote it, and then the price was only twenty nine nine. Yeah, well, you don't have to tell them the price. Come on, <laughs> yeah, date us. Well, I said 45 years, so you know, you know I've been around for a bit. But anyway, what happens is uh, we got it. We got it under contract. Steve was uh, elated. I mean, you know, and I, and I said, Steve, you're the only person I know in town. Do you know anybody else that might want to buy any real estate? And he says, well, yeah, there's this guy I know in my, in my uh, church group. And, and he said that uh, he wants to sell his house. Well, let's get him on the phone. We did and went right over there the next day and got a listing. So my first sale. In my first listing, 
was because of this gentleman that's joining the, the class tonight, Steve Matthews. They're waiting for my referral fee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. What? Well, it would have been fifty. Bucks. Our last part. Okay. Let's go to question number one. <laughs> we we have a few Utah law items we've got to go through, and and uh, just just jumping right in here, we have question number one. Okay. So Dan, our technical uh, administrator with the mostest, just threw it up on the screen, and it says number one, a sales agent's license application requires licensing fees, including a fee for the sales agent's license application requires one including a fee for the, okay, A, Association of Realtors, B, the Department of Commerce Employee Trust. Okay, <laughs> right. I told you that usually you could throw away a couple of these. The, the Association of Realtors, uh, be it a state association, national or local uh, board, uh, is our private club. It's something that we all join because we all want to take advantage of a multiple listing service and sharing our listings with one another and getting you know the the ability to have thousands of agents out there in the street marketing your listings but that's a private club has nothing to do with licensing you know that so the department of commerce employee trust what the heck you know you'd probably throw that one out errors and emissions insurance eno insurance is a big part of our industry uh, but it's definitely not part of your license application fee. You know, that's something totally different. That's something you get with your broker. So that leaves us with D, which is the correct answer, Education Research and Recovery Fund. Part of the money that you pay into the division, there's a little bit of that uh, in there. And it's, this is a, every two years you renew your license. And um, part of that goes to the Education Research and Recovery Fund. You know, so uh, not a lot, but a little. And, uh, but you got to know that that's where it goes and, and why it goes and whatnot. And that's, that's the test question. I mean, it's something you got to know. Let's look at number two. Okay, if a real estate licensee is convicted of theft or false statements, what must they do? Okay, convicted. Okay, convicted. So it's not like you were accused. I mean, this is someone that's judged you and you've been convicted of theft or false statements, what must they do? Okay, you're the agent, you did wrong, you did some serious wrong, and uh, now you're in a position of what must you do? A, notify the division of real estate. B, quit practicing real estate, cease and desist. You can't do it anymore because you were convicted of something else. A change to a new brokerage, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, whatever. Uh, refund commissions under last transaction. <laughs> yeah, that's tough because you already spent it. Um, all right. So of these, notify the real estate division has got to be the warm and fuzzy that 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 jumps out at you, right? Cease to practice real estate. Uh, the division is going to tell you that. You know, you you don't just do it because somebody else uh, got you convicted for something wrong. Now, eventually, if it was theft, and if it really was saying false statements, uh, you're going to lose your license anyway. But uh, I don't know. They might put you on probation or suspension. We'll, we'll see. It depends on what it was and how serious it was, but this is something really nasty. And so you got to let the division know. And how quickly? 10 days. You got to let them know within 10 days. Change to a new broker? No. Refund commissions? No. Nope. That's it. Number two. Um, notify the division of real estate and you know it, it's going to be a bad day but then you did some bad things so don't don't do this don't do bad things or if you do bad things uh don't give up on getting away with it <laughs> just teasing let's look at number three please a sales agent represents their principal broker okay you're a sales agent you got to work for a broker uh, after you've been a sales agent for a while, like three years, and you've accumulated some experiential points, uh, then you can go back to school, take another 120 hours in the broker's course, and then pass another broker's exam, which is a little bit harder than the sales exam, not substantially, but a little bit. And uh, then you can become an associate broker. Okay, an associate broker is a broker. You have a broker's license, but you're working for another broker a broker who is a principal broker who's responsible for the firm. That's the only difference between associate broker and principal 
its principal is responsible for the firm and the trust account and all of those legal responsibilities that go with that. And your associate broker, you're really the same status of a sales agent um, as, as far as broker, broker supervision over you and that type of thing. Um, but uh, you are under a broker. Now, the advantage of being an associate broker is, number one, you could be a branch manager if you needed to, although that has become less necessary as they've changed the laws very recently in Utah to where a broker can actually run more than one office at a time. Uh, they were always had the ability to have a number of branch offices, but in each branch office, they had to have a branch manager. Well, they, they took that away. So a broker could run you know, as many offices as he wants without a branch manager. But, you know, that's getting kind of iffy out there because all your agents screw up. <laughs> and so you need someone, uh, you know, that's present in Cedar City or wherever this branch office is so that they can kind of keep tabs on things and keep your agents in line and make sure they're filling out contracts correctly and that kind of thing. But who does a associate broker represent? Now, do you represent A, only represent themselves? No, because they're under a broker. Okay, so you represent your principal broker. So that one's not right. Okay, now represent a sales agent. Now represents a sales agent. No, an associate broker doesn't represent a, a sales agent. They, they represent their broker. The sales agent's representing the same broker they're working for, but they're just a sales agent and you're an associate broker. Okay, and C, still represents a principal broker. Okay, that one's warm and fuzzy, right? And D, still must act as a limited agent. Well, whether you're a limited agent or not, depends on, it depends on how you set the deal up and your uh, agency responsibilities. So uh, just because you're an associate broker doesn't mean you have to be a limited agent. You, you, you know, could be a single agent. You could be a limited agent. You could be a designated agent. Okay, there's other things that you, you could do. So out of this one, the answer is C, still represents a principal broker, okay? We recommend that you get your broker's license. I, I, I always advise agents to get their broker's license as soon as you can, because you never know when an opportunity might come up. I mean, you might be working for a builder uh, in this broker, principal broker, you have an associate broker's license, and the builder comes to you and says, you know, uh, I don't, I've never really even met your broker. Um, you know, there was that one time you came by, but you know, I, uh, you're the one that does all this work out here. I, I, I tell you what I want to do. I want to have my own brokerage company and I want you to run it. And I want to split some profits with you. And I want to do this, that, and the other thing. And if you can't do that, well, then I'll go find someone else. But, you know, I mean, I, I, I just don't want to, you know, disperse all these commissions through your broker anymore. I want a piece of that. Well, that might be your whole business, you know. So uh, the fact that you have an associate broker's license and can break away and start your own company with this builder guy uh, might be something that you need to do, you know. And so, you know, uh, but that would be one example. Let's look at number four, please. Okay, in order to get experience points for a broker application, remember I said three years, you have to accumulate enough points. Uh, a sales agent can do what? Okay, there's some things you get points for and some things you don't get points for. Well, that's what this list is. Some are legit, you get points for those, and the others are, you don't get points for it at all, okay? Uh, towards being coming a broker, experience points. Let's look these over here. A, help agents find listings. Okay. Well, that's a necessary part of the business, but it's not something that the division allows you to get points for. You help agents find listings. Okay. They want things that are more related to something you have to have a license to do. And yeah, you could be doing research for people uh, without a license. I mean, you could be researching expired listings. You could be researching vacant homes. You could be researching properties in foreclosure. You could be researching vacant lots. You know, you could be researching houses that have FHA existing loans on them. I mean, there's a lot of things that you could research for a broker or an agent or a group of agents and not be licensed. Okay. So helping agents find listings, mm, no, that's not going to work. Design advertisements. 
um, yeah, well, designing really catchy ads, whether they're the uh, audios, videos, uh, still ads, uh, you know, <laughs> TikTok dances, whatever they might be, it might be important to, to, to get people to come to this brokerage or to, or to expose your listings to the public or to get listings from the public. Uh, but that's not something, the designing advertisements is not going to get you points in your broker's license. Making cold calls is not going to get you points on your broker's license. All right, so it's got to be the last one on the list, right? And that's it, representing a buyer in a home sale. Representing a buyer in a home sale, representing a seller in a home sale, these are things you can get points for. And there's a few other things you can get points for as well. I, I'm sure you've looked at the list already, but it's important you look at that list and understand that doing leases can get you uh, points uh, and, you know, there, there's a list of things on the, the amount of points and, and how much you get, and you need to be a little bit aware of that. Okay, let's go to number five, please. Now, here we have a situation where we have an associate broker again, and, uh, but an associate broker is, associate broker is, okay, A, supervise exactly as a regular sales agent. Pretty good answer. Hang on to that one, okay? <laughs> B, able to work independently without a principal broker. Nobody works independently without a principal broker except a principal broker, okay? You could be a broker with no agents, which would mean you're the principal broker for your firm, but it's like, you know, Rick Roller and no associates. <laughs> and so it, you're a principal broker, you just don't have any sales agents, you know? And, uh, uh, but uh, you're able to work independently with, without a principal broker? Not really. You know, as an associate broker, you know, you only have the same license status really as a sales agent. You must be under a broker. Um, and, you know, real simple. You just go down to the division, switch your license around from associate broker to principal broker, and you are one, okay? Because you're ready to go. And that's the reason why you know, Dan and I have suggested to people that, hey, take the broker's license when you have the time. Because when you need the broker's license, when that builder comes to you and says, hey, I want to start my own brokerage firm and I want you to run it. Uh, if you already have the broker's license, it makes things go a lot smoother and quicker. See, not required to renew their license. <laughs> yeah, right, sure. You know, the division loves those license fees. That's how they keep things going. And uh, they're not going to let anyone get by without paying those. So that can't be right. And uh, higher than a principal broker. Higher, you know, I mean, what, like uh, some metaphysical higher or what? No, principal broker is as high as you can get in our state. The associate broker is, is a broker who's working under a principal broker. So which one is it, guys? Well, the, it told you it's the one I told you to save, and that's A, supporting uh, exactly as a regular sales agent. Same thing, reviewing your contracts, being responsible for you, uh, having you run problems by you so you can you know, get them fixed before they become serious problems and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's the correct answer there. You know, we've gone through half the questions so far. If you have any other questions that you'd like to ask, please chime in, you know, and, 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 and we'll get them answered for you as, as best we can. Let's look at number six. Which of the following is the legal use of a P.O. box for real estate agents? Okay, uh, P.O. boxes, that's a post office box, right? For real estate agents. Home, rec home address on division records, okay? Mailing address on division records. Last known address on division records. And uh, brokerage address on division records, okay? Well, and most brokerages don't put uh, down uh, a P.O. box for their business address because they want people to be able to find their office. Uh, that would be D. But the last known effect on the division records is, would probably be a physical address because that's what they would probably have to have. So we're looking at a home address or mailing address. Um, there are a lot of agents, uh, particularly the female persuasion, that... that um, don't want to publish their address on the public record. You know, makes good sense. 
you know, if they're afraid of attracting the wrong attention from the wrong kind of people, uh, they may not want to put, you know, that address out there. So many of them might opt to do a PO box for B, the mailing address on the division records. And that's okay. You know, and uh, now the division must know your real address, but that's not for public consumption. Uh, and, and you can do that if, if you want. Now, if you don't tell them that, then your home address is going to be in the public record. So anyone can get your, you know, um, in the address of where you live and drive by and have a look, you know, or whatever they're driving by for. So, um, but a lot of, a lot of, uh, our ladies in our industry do do put just a, a PO box because you know just they just don't want their home address public and you know males can do it too you know so so that would be what it would be uh, that would be a legal use of a PO box okay and of course like I said the division must know what your real address is because occasionally they may have to send you a, a summons or they, a letter or come by for a visit <laughs> and uh, and they need to know where you are. Let's look at number seven, please. Here, here, here we go. A licensee must notify the division of real estate of any license status change within five, 10, 15, or 20 days. Come on, guys. You should know this one right off the bat. If you're looking at 10 under B, then you're right. You know, that that's a good one. 10's a real popular time frame in the division rules. You know, remember that other thing that you had to let them know if when you got in serious trouble within 10 days, uh, you have to let them know if you've changed your address or you've changed your name uh, within 10 days. Um, lots of, you know, change your brokerage. Uh, so 10 is the number, okay? And it, it's something that will appear over and over and over again. You know, a lot of these things on Utah law, folks, you just got to know them or you don't. I mean, you know, you can't guess. I mean, if you're staring at this and you didn't know it was 10, but remember, it's a recognition exam. So you didn't have to, you know, it wasn't a question where you had to fill in a blank and there was nothing to go with. If you look at five, you say, no, that's not right. 10, 10. Ooh, that sounds good. I think it is 10, 15, 20. It's, it's 10. And then you're done. You know, and that's, you pass the exam and get on with it, you know, get out there and start making, helping people. Number eight, and making money. Bless lives, make money. Number eight, if a real estate licensee expires, uh, the agent has blank number of days to renew with only a late fee. Now in Utah, your license will expire every two years. And uh, the first time you go in for renewal, uh, there's a couple of classes you must take. One is the 12-hour new agent class. And the other is the three-hour mandatory class, which comes in three flavors, commercial, residential, or property management. You can choose whatever flavor you want, but you have to take the three-hour man mandatory and the 12-hour new agent. That's 15 hours. Uh, so you got to get those two out of the way for dang sure. And then you could take whatever else you want. Now, when you join a board of realtors, which you probably will, because you you want to have access to the MLS key, which allows you to get into different uh, properties that are for sale. The only way to get an MLS key is is to uh, join the board and and uh, take an ethics class and uh, and pay for it. And then you can get get a an MLS key. And a lot of them are electronic keys that work with your smartphones today and, and, they're, and they're great they're absolutely great so uh you need to do that but uh but but part of getting your mls key is to take that ethics class so you you might add that to your uh, tally as well but what i'm telling you is is the first time you renew because you have to take the 12 hour to three hour for 15 you have to take the ethics for three to get your key and there'll be some board orientation and some other classes you're going to want to take um so, you know, you're going to get a lot of edu education and a lot of agents say, well, I already have my 18 hours. I don't need any more. And that's just foolish. Take lots of CE classes, guys. I, I would, your first year in the business, you probably ought to take at least two dozen CE classes, you know, because it, it'll give you some ideas on how to make money in the business. And it will also uh, get you up to speed quicker. 
Let's look at a number. Let's look at number nine, please. And number nine says, if a real estate agent's first renewal on their first renewal, they must have completed the 12-hour new agent class. Well, I gave that one away. It's not four, six, eight, or those. It's 12, okay? Which is a day and a half because they only let you do eight hours of CE at any one time, at least according to their records. Um, so you got to be careful of that as well. 12 hours. Now, there's a lot of new agent classes you can take. And to tell you the truth, the information in that class is mandated by the Division of Real Estate. In other words, these are the topics you have to teach. Now, how you teach them, uh, how you make them memorable, how you make them understandable is something that is a challenge an educator has. I'm really proud of my 12-hour new agent class because people walk out of their understanding agency for the first time. People walk out of there understanding some of the rules that can easily come and bite you like blind ads and that kind of thing. So I take extra care. So I would recommend my class, but you know, why would I recommend anybody else's? Also recommend mine because you can get it for free. You know, So keep in touch with me if you want. I'd love to have you come. And if, and if you don't, you know, that's okay. You know, we'll get, pick up some other classes along the way. Number 10. Here we go. How often must a licensee take the mandatory course? Well, how often do you have to renew your license? You have to renew every two years, okay? Has nothing to do with your birth month. You know, it has everything to do with your first month that you applied for a license and got into real estate. That becomes your renewal month for the duration of you having a license in Utah. But how often do you think you have to take the mandatory course? Well, you know, it's every new every renewal, right? Right? <laughs> okay. Um, that's a little different number nine than what I had on my list here, Dan. I had on a real estate agent's first renewal, they must complete the 12 hour class. We already did that one, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I think this one just was also numbered nine by accident. Okay, so we have two two number nines. It's kind of like the Beatles. They keep saying number nine, number nine. We still never knew what that meant. Or maybe you do. If, if you do, let me know. So how often? Well, it's every renewal. Um, now they do change it. So in every every year they have an update in as uh, you have to have a special license to teach these mandatory classes. I'm licensed to teach all three of them. So if you wanna take any of them, just, you know, you can come to mine if you want. I'll let you in for free. But uh, it, it would be not on their first renewal, not every year, it'd be every two years and only after their first renewal. No, it, it, your first renewal, you're going to have to hit it. Let's look at number 10, please. All right, a real estate agent, a real estate licensee is not required to do what? Sell timeshares, negotiate home prices, prospect, receive commission on a home sale. Well, we have to have a license to get a commission. You probably figured that out real quick. You have to have a license to do prospecting for listings or for buyers. And uh, so you can't have someone that's not licensed out prospecting for you. you. You have to have a license to prospect. And to negotiate home prices, you know, you need to have a license. Uh, so what do you not need a license for? To sell timeshares. Uh, timeshares uh, actually requires a different license. It's not a big deal. It's, it's 50 bucks and there's no test. You just write out a check for the 50 bucks and you become a timeshare salesman. Um, and it's pretty easy to get if you want to sell timeshares. And there are a lot of people that enjoy that and do real well, well with that. I, uh, I used to do a lot of training with timeshare salesmen because they didn't um, really uh, understand or interact much with normal real estate as a timeshare salesman. Timeshares are a little bit different animal. And that's why the timeshare industry went to the division and the commissioners and got it separated out as a separate license. So you get a real estate license, sell real estate and a timeshare license to sell timeshares, okay? 
Okay, let's talk about um, thought to live by. Okay, and uh, that comes from my great little book here. This is a Forbes, um, yeah, epitaph, no, epigrams, sorry. Leather covered, but it's wearing out because it's quite old. But here's the deal. The fellow that gets too big for his shoes is apt to finish up barefooted. <laughs> now, in real estate, you're going to find out pretty quick that some of these commission checks are quite large. I mean, $20,000, $15,000, $60,000. I mean, it's wow. And uh, I've seen a lot of agents get too big for their shoes, you know, and they, they start thinking, wow, wow, great. You know, look at me. I'm making $300,000 a year now. Uh, come on, guys, just just remember to bless lives, make money. Yes, you're going to make some money. I want you to make a lot of money. You're going to want to make a lot of money. Your broker's going to want you to make a lot of money. But he's going to want you to bless a lot of lives. You know, and so uh, just keep keep a balance there. Bless lives, make money. It's a good mantra for real estate. But if you get too big for your britches, or in this case, too big for your shoes, you may end up barefooted. Okay, so keep a little humility in there. Uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty interesting because when the big checks start to roll in, um, it's amazing how life changing that can be. You know, yes, real estate is a straight commission business, and yes, it can get you know lean occasionally from one check to the next. But if you're working hard and you're consistent it's going to be a fantastic business for you. And it's going to be a great time to get into the business. My goodness, we might even see a little bit of retracement in prices where people can afford some homes again. Okay, it's, it's you know, whether it's a seller's market or whether it's a buyer's market, it's always a realtor's market, okay? We just take our three, six, five, 10, whatever percent that you get off the top. And uh, it's, it, it's amazing how much help people really need and how much help you can actually give and give professional service. I got into this business because I wanted to bless more lives. I knew that if I was of more value to people, then I'd be able to be in a position where I would make more money. And uh, it certainly has worked out that well. It'll work out that well for you too. So this is Rick Roller. Thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, does anyone have any other questions about any other topics before we close up? This is my phone number, 801-556-8000. That's 556-8000 five, five, with 801 out in front of it. Call me if you need any help. I'd be happy to be there for you. Uh, won't, won't go take the exam for you. <laughs> but call if you're confused on something. We're happy to help. Uh, I want you to know that Dan and I are very committed to you doing well. And we don't want you to flunk because we don't want you to ruin our passing ratio, which is extremely high. <laughs> we have the highest, Dan can't say this, but I can. We have the highest passing ratio of a school in Utah. Really? So anyway, thanks for being with us tonight. Call if you have any questions and we'll be happy to get them answered for you. Dan, do you have any final comments? Really appreciate you, Rick. Really great advice and knowledge. And it's great to have you here sharing that with us and our students. We do really appreciate you. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. And I love helping new agents get up and get productive. And uh, you're in the right school. You're going to do well on the test. And you're going to learn a lot of things through the school that are going to help you actually be successful. And remember, you can always call us. Thanks for being here tonight. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.